Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Our event will begin in five minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Our event will begin shortly. Good evening. I'm Ariella 
Anudis, a proud CTA parent. And along with my co-chairs, Simcha Wolf and Edith Frank, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 2023 Columbus Torah Academy Scholarship Dinner. For many of us, these are uncharted times we are living in. Our minds are focused on the welfare of our families, friends, IDF soldiers, the hostages, and the entire country of our beloved Israel. Yet we understand more succinctly than ever before the importance of the education at CTA. We see how the education one gets at Torah Academy will ensure a future of literate and knowledgeable Jews who will perpetuate a love of Torah learning, a love of the United States, and a love of Israel. Tonight, we see a world in need of more kindness, compassion, and understanding among all people that CTA has and will continue to provide for its students. So tonight, as we celebrate the fourth night of Hanukkah, and as we celebrate our 65th year of educational excellence, be mindful of the event, of the benefits, and the impact the Torah Academy has not only on our country, but the Jewish community worldwide. It is now my pleasure to call upon Roni Delman, a 12th grade student here at CTA, to light the, Hanor the Hanukkah menorah. Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kijanu B'mitzvotav V'tivanu L'hadlik Ner She'el Chanukah Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam She'asani Sim L'avoteinu V'yamim Ha'em V'azman Hazeh We are proud to honor this evening several exceptional individuals who have strengthened our school through, through service, financial support, and leadership. Gary Covell will be receiving the Distinguished Community Service Award. Herbert and Francine Graff will receive the Distinguished Service Award. And Matt Bailey will be recognized for his 20 years of service at Torah Academy. In addition, we will feature amazing videos by our students, highlights about our, our alumni, and an auction with fabulous prizes. Most importantly, we are confident that tonight's program will continue to shine a light on the impactful educational and extracurricular program within CTA and the caring individuals and organizations that support our school. Speaking of our extracurricular programs, one of our students' most popular activities is the lower school choir. This year, our lower school choir is made up of 33 adorable students from grades three to six who diligently practiced under the guidance of music teacher extraordinaire, Sherry Friedman, who tonight is celebrating her birthday. Happy birthday, Sherry! Please join us in welcoming to the stage what is always a highlight of the scholarship dinner, the CTA Lower School Choir, with a special shout out to superstar third grade student, Ben Schatz.
to the beautiful, fancy, and immaculate CTA Banquet Hall. I think you mean, welcome to the gym, or better known as, Mr. Bailey's amazing classroom. Thank you, Mr. Bailey, for being the best gym teacher and athletic director CTA could have ever asked for. Congratulations on 20 years. May you stay for 20 more. Please enjoy our first song, No Lettity La Shalom.
next song, The Greatest Gift by Deborah Pullman, talked about the magical moment of lying the menorah together as a family as we reflect on the miracle of the oil. Mr. and Mrs. Graff have been supporters and dedicated parents and grandparents to CTA students for many years. This song speaks to their family first values as they have always made their children the focus of their lives. Our next song, Lecha, by Mordechai Shapiro, is about gratitude to Hashem. We learn from our wonderful teachers that each of us has the power with Hashem's help to change the world. Thank you, Mr. Covell, for your support of CTA, but mostly for your big, for your heart of, so, big heart. And even bigger! 
stronger belief in each of the students at CTA and our potential, greatness, and goodness. Vihisha Amda comes from the Haggadah, which we recite on Pesach. This song talks about how in every generation our enemies are always trying to destroy us, but Hashem always rescues us and saves us from their hand. This song we dedicate to the IDF soldiers who are Hashem's special messengers who are protecting our brothers and sisters in Israel. Please Hashem, keep them safe while they are away from their families and doing the holy work for the sake of the Jewish people. Please join us singing after the first chorus. The words will appear up on the screens.
Thank you, Lower School Choir, for your beautiful performance. A special thank you to Choir Director Sherry Friedman, accompanied by Rachel Metz, Tony Haygood, Yuri Schatz, and Ben Schatz. Please see page 10 in the Tribute Journal for a list of all the lower school choir members and accompanists. Since 1958, Torah Academy has been dedicated to providing a nurturing learning environment. Our students from a variety of backgrounds get a strong secular education that imparts critical thinking skills and a strong modern Jewish education that inspires knowledge and love of the Torah, an appreciation of an American history and knowledge of Jewish history, which builds a connection to the state of Israel and the Hebrew language. In talking about our strong academics, I would like to take a moment to highlight 12th grade student Svi Chaikin, who has been designated as a National Merit Semifinalist. A stellar achievement. Mazel tov, Svi. Wow, Svi, so impressive. As we turn back to our scholarship dinner, it's important to note the central role that CTA has on our growing Jewish community and the impact of the scholarship fund to make Jewish day school education affordable for all. Thanks to the funds raised from the scholarship dinner, generous contributors to our annual spring fundraiser and support from Jewish Columbus, it is possible for many families to send their children to Torah Academy who otherwise would not. Sorry. Sorry. On behalf of all the families and children who receive an education at CTA, we say to each and every one of you, Toda Rabah. Please look on pages 61 and 62 in your tribute journal to see all of our generous sponsors. Thank you very much for helping to make this evening a resounding success. Tonight's theme is the impact, the impact each of us can make. Our first honorees, Herbert and Francine Greff, symbolize how one individual, or in this case, one couple, can impact our community in such a significant way. Please join us in welcoming Joel Greff, who will introduce his parents. Joel has a multifaceted and long history of involvement at Torah Academy. Current board member, the resident manager of our, our IT department, an alumnus, all the way back from the eighth grade class of 1980. Yeah. Joel is a passionate supporter at CTA, a creative thinker, a problem solver, and is super reliable when it comes to getting things done. Please welcome Joel to the stage. Thank you, that was uh, very nice. I don't know who wrote that for you. <laughs> Several months ago, I got called into Rabbi Drandoff's office. It's actually uh, not that odd, but uh, usually he's asking me for my thoughts on a project, or more likely a difficult halakhic interpretation. <laughs> I was told that the school wanted to honor our parents at tonight's dinner. My first response was, for real? Are you truly out of people? There's no one else. I was told that they are worthy and have a compelling story of distinguished service. A few weeks ago, Shari told me I was gonna introduce our parents, Herb and Francine Greff, to you this evening. I literally spent hours trying to figure out an interesting way to remark about honoring them. I was sold on one idea until sitting in Minion last week when a different idea came to me. It is a love story. 
No, not the kind of love story you're probably thinking of. It is not the story of how a Vietnam era veteran raised by a single mother on the south side of Columbus with three children met a girl from West Virginia for a date. Then a year and a half later, another date, followed by marriage. No, not the fact that last month our parents celebrated 60 years of misery. I meant marriage. This is the story of how an Orthodox boy from Beth Jacob and a less observant girl from Charleston, West Virginia, built our family in Columbus, Ohio. The story is about two people that have always had a love for Israel and Jewish causes. As many of you know, my father was a Vietnam era veteran. Following his service in the army and marriage to my mother, he was kind of drafted a second time. This time into the Jewish war veterans of the United States. JWV was founded in 1896 by 63 Jewish veterans. And believe it or not, it was because of anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism regarding a lack of Jewish service in the Civil War. Since then, JWV has been the voice for Jewish causes in the armed services, establishing chaplaincy, insisting that Jewish gravestones throughout the world really have stars of David on them, advocating for Jewish veterans, Israel, and any other causes. Our father is a man of integrity, loyalty, and commitment. Through his volunteerism and hard work, Herb rose in the ranks. His aspirations led him from post commander to state commander on to national commander. The role of national commander is to represent and advocate for every Jewish veteran in the United States of America. He met presidents and popes. He visited military bases across the country and the globe. He testified in Congress for Veterans Affairs. He was all in. When my parents, marri when my parents married, the role of Judaism in the household needed to be addressed. At that time, Beth Jacob, no offense, was a little too much for our Southern Belle mother. A good Asachim was more palatable as a traditional synagogue, and that's where we went. If you know my mother, anything she gets involved with, she too goes all in on. Both of our parents became involved in the shul, serving the brotherhood, sisterhood, board of trustees, so on and so forth. My mother, being a teacher, embraced the need to grow youth programming at a good Asachim. Her sweet spot was working for teens. Our home became ground zero for award-winning floats. She assisted in implementing high school programming at Agudasachim, unheard of anywhere, let alone in Columbus, Ohio, in the late 70s and 80s. She helped send 30 teenagers to Israel on a 10-day trip of a lifetime in 1981. Can you imagine that 50 years ago? She led other trips, Jewish history, kosher food, the Big Apple, you know. At the same time, my mother and her dear friend, Gwenny Schwartz, the Colonel of Racha, disrupted kosher baking in town, founding Balabusta Bakers. They were the premier kosher caterer in town, baking deliciousness for hundreds of events at Agud Asachim, Beth Jacob, and the Fair of Israel. Together, our parents dedicated their free time to serving the community. In 1971, Frank Nudis, Zichron called my father, he lobbied him on the importance of giving kids a Jewish education, and he was steadfast that Gref children needed to attend a tiny Jewish day school. How could they pass on the idea of sending their child, at the time it was just me, to a small one bathroom house with a giant rock yard to play in? Through Frank's persuasion and generosity, our parents committed what resources they had into sending my brother Michael and I to Columbus Terra Academy over 50 years ago. My brother, well, you can clap if you feel like it. <laughs> my brother Michael and I both attended CTA. As you may have seen, I graduated in 1980, and he was in 1982. My children, Alex and Brandon, started attending CTA over 20 years ago. Today, Josh is currently an 11th grader, 
and Ben is a sixth grader. The love story that was principled on Jewish education and community service developed, grew, and flourished. From a kosher home, growing up in a shul, or growing up in shul, being active in a good Asakam youth, BJY, BBYO, and NCSY, and attending CTA, our parents instilled in us, in our entire family, the value of Jewish education, the importance of living a Jewish life, the responsibility of standing up for Jewish rights, and perhaps most importantly, the obligation to give back to Jewish causes through both volunteerism and charitable giving. Our parents have truly set a remarkable example to all of us. That, my friends, is the love story I stumbled upon while davening last week in shul. The story of generations embodying the commitment to Jewish education and Jewish community. This is who and what we are here to honor this evening. I am thankful and honored to call Herb and Francine Greff, our parents, grandparents, and our friends. Why don't you guys come up here? to drop it. So uh, I have the other honor of presenting the Distinguished Service Award to Herb and Francine Greff for their generosity and longtime dedication to CTA and Jewish education inspired by their children and grandchildren. Today's CTA scholarship, 12-10-23. I don't know if we know what date in Peace Life it is, but it says 57-84. <laughs> 27. Thank you. Oh, we got Thank you very much. I want to say we appreciate the big crowd that this scholarship dinner has range tonight, and Francie and I are very thankful for our recognition. Joel's speech sort of screwed up my speech, but that's normal. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Had my speech all written, 35 minutes, and Sherry says, uh, uh, you have two minutes. <laughs> I said, Sherry, I can't get up out of a chair in two minutes. <laughs> But in any event, I will make it short and brief. I grew up in Columbus, Ohio, and the education system 100 years ago was something called Columbus Hebrew School. To me, it was a babysitting service after school because I got very little out of it. I did learn the Jewish alphabet, and I learned a little about the Bible at Sunday school on Sunday mornings. So obviously, when our children were born, I said they've got to have much better than Columbus Hebrew School. So when I got a call from Frank Nudis, I was delighted, and I certainly was not going to turn down the offer. So as Joel explained, he and Michael entered the school and graduated, and thanks to their knowledge and education and dedication, they in turn sent their kids and their grandkids to this wonderful school. I hope that. Joel, how do you know he doesn't have any grandkids? Okay, Joel has no grandkids yet, but we're hoping. Uh, <laughs> in any event, again, I want to thank you all for coming. We appreciate you very much, and we will do everything in our power to continue to support CTA in all that they do, because it is a fabulous place for Jewish education for our children. Shalom Aleichem.
One way to measure success of a school is to look at the achievements of its alumni. Shout out to my husband, Sam Nudis. <laughs> Would the alumni and alumni's parents in the room please stand up? Thank you for your lifelong commitment to CTA and your impact on strengthening our community. It is my pleasure to ask Dr. Naomi Myers, President of Torah Academy Board of Trustees, to come to the podium to say a few words. Welcome to the Columbus Torah Academy Scholarship Dinner. I want to thank you for your support of CTA as we focus on providing our students with a Jewish education and preparing them for a life of meaning and success. Tonight, we recognize honorees for their dedication, service, and commitment to the success, growth, and future of CTA. Gary Covell, along with Herb and Francine Greff, are receiving the Distinguished Service Award. Matt Bailey, athletic director and physical education teacher, will be recognized for his 20 years of service. Go Lions! I am proud to serve as board president, and I thank the many board members and past presidents who are here tonight for their continued dedication and commitment to Columbus Torah Academy. We are fortunate to live in a community where providing a Torah education for our children is a top priority. Our school is a gem of our community, and its long-term success is critical to the sustainability of the Jewish community of Columbus. It is for these reasons that the CTA lay leadership in partnership with Rabbi Drandoff, has developed a strategic plan for the next three years. The committee met with a strategic coach, conducted several parent focus groups, and surveyed major stakeholders of our school community. The three pillars of our strategic plan are, be the best place to educate a Jewish child in Central Ohio, cultivate a healthy CTA community, and expand our enrollment across all demographics. Next steps are underway as we begin to accomplish the goals of our strategic plan. Our upper school teachers are working in a year-long professional development program with mastery portfolio to be more intentional in the way academic instruction is delivered. With the hiring of a full-time upper school intervention specialist as part of the Learning Center, we have increased our ability to meet student needs. We are in the midst of an Isaac self-study to renew our accreditation. Our partnership with Ghana Fryam Preschool continues to thrive. The girls' high school has been approved and is now in an important and permanent part of Columbus Tour Academy. And finally, we are working to hire a K through 12 Judaic Studies principal to oversee all areas of the Judaic curriculum, programming, and teaching. Top, <laughs> top priorities are competitive salaries and benefits for our teachers. The cost of both of these initiatives continues to increase. In order to achieve our goals and maintain affordable tuition, I'm asking all of you to consider participating in the Ohio Tax Credit Scholarship Program. You are able to allocate up to $750 per individual or $1,500 filing jointly to a non-public school. This is a wonderful way to use your tax dollars to support something important to you. These funds go directly to tuition scholarships. Please use the QR code 
provided at your table to take advantage of the opportunity to support CTA. Otherwise, you'll be getting a call from me. As a board, our work is invaluable to the success of our school, and we will continue to strive to best support our administrators and teachers who are dedicating their time and energy to our children. I look forward to sharing more information about ways to get involved and to show you support. Thank you for coming, and Chanukah Sameach. I would like to call to the podium Bina Newman and Liel Chaikin, both 12th grade students. The events of October 7th are surprising and shocking. It has left many of us in a state of helplessness. It's hard to continue with normal day-to-day -day life knowing that there is so much suffering in Israel. Most of our fellow students, teachers, and many of you have family and friends living in Israel, serving in the IDF, and facing day-to-day -day instability. For me, it's my brother in yeshiva. For me, it's my grandparents, aunts and uncles, and cousins who have lived in Israel for generations. Developing a connection to and love of the state of Israel is a central part of Torah Academy education. Since kindergarten, I recall vividly the many ways we have been taught about Israel. Hebrew language classes and pen pals, Yom HaZikaron commemorations and Yom HaTzmut celebrations, waving flags, eating falafel, chanting songs, wearing blue and white. Even just six months ago, during lighter times, a delegation of CTA students and teachers traveled to New York to march for the first time as a school with 40,000 others in the New York City Israel Day Parade, with CTA getting many remarks as possibly the group who traveled from the farthest and smallest community. When the horrible events six weeks ago began in Israel, there was no way we were prepared to respond. But Rabbi Drandoff and our teachers were ready to take us by the hand and help us make sense of something so tragic and senseless. We were asked to depend on our education and our upbringing, to focus first and foremost on prayer and Torah learning, to think about advocacy, and to above all prioritize chesed and kindness. I quickly got involved with creating a Tehillim group so that me and my classmates could pray for the murdered, the hostages, the wounded, and chayalim. In my role as Stand With Us intern, I created an informational flyer that my classmates and I could use for advocacy. With our teachers, we were able to turn our stunned feelings into action. We added Misha Bayrach for the soldiers at the end of the Torah reading. We wrote and sent cards to Chayalim and residents of Israel. We lobbied Congress and took on mitzvot in the merit of the Chayalim. We sent home Shabbat candles with every family in the school to bring more light into our community during dark times. We ordered Israel USA flag pins for everyone who wanted to wear one. We participated in fundraisers set up by parents, community leaders, friends, and even directly from soldiers for supplies for their army units and fellow Israelis. The high school students had an opportunity to join in a powerful Zoom with 10,000 Jewish day school and yeshiva students from across North America to say to Hillem, hear words of inspiration, and sing Hatikva across the continent. CTA brought in an expert speaker, Avi Posen from Unpacked, for the high school for a two-hour seminar to help us gain perspective, not just on the war, but on anti-Semitism and the history of Jew hatred and bigotry and how to respond. I know that in Hebrew and Judaic classes, throughout the grades, even down to the youngest and most innocent students here at CTA, there has been continued sharing, sharing of support, love, prayers, through video making, card designing, and delicately answering students' questions about what is happening in Israel and why. We were fortunate enough a few weeks ago to have generous sponsors, including Jewish Columbus, to make sure that CTA could facilitate three buses of students, faculty, parents, and supporters to attend the rally in DC, joining with close to 300,000 other supporters of Israel. A moving experience of Achdut, unity, that we won't ever forget, but hope to never repeat. The pain isn't going away, but the clarity of how valuable the initial request of prayer, advocacy, Torah learning, and Chesed is giving us direction. Thank you to our parents, teachers, and community for giving us that. Please watch the screen for two videos that speak to the importance of Israel to our school community. 
The first is recent alumnus Ben Sion Gisser of the class of 2020, who connects his service in the IDF to his education at CTA. The second video is from David and Esther Burnswag, CTA parents whose son, Eli, from the class of 2021, is currently in service. We pray for the return of all the hostages, the safety of our soldiers, and the promise of Israel as an enduring safe haven for the Jewish people during these tumultuous times. I graduated CTA class of 2020 and I went to Israel to Yeshiva. I spent a year and a half or so in Yeshiva at a Kotel and very early on in that time, I realized I wanted to draft to the army. The reason I made that decision was because I felt a tremendous connection to the land of Israel and to the people of Israel and to the state of Israel. And I've always tried to live my life wanting to do what's right and wanting to give as much as I can to the Jewish people and to do something in the prime of my life that will help people in a serious way. And I saw the army as a real beacon for that, as the decision that was right for me, as something that I knew every day when I was getting up um, that I'd be doing something correct, something that's right, something that's protecting people, something that's ensuring the future of the Jewish people. And CTA really built that for me. From my time in first grade, just knowing that it was a major part of my life, being involved in all aspects of Judaism, and in a place like Columbus, Ohio, a place with not so many Jews, having the place to really grow in my Judaism and to feel like I'm a part of a nation that is not surrounding me like it is in Israel. You go all over Columbus and, and you don't see many Jews, but here in CTA I was able to, I was able to thrive and I was able to grow in my Judaism, and that sent me towards yeshiva and ultimately towards the army. My greatest memories from CTA really come from the camaraderie I had with my, with my peers and the relationships I had with my teachers, and the environment in CTA was just, was just tremendous the entire time I was here. Um, I always had a great time. I always look back at high school, and I see it as one of the, like, obviously, I think I never, I haven't had more fun than I did in high school anywhere else in my life. And people, I hear my siblings sometimes like complaining, I have this much homework, and, and I have this test and that test, and I always think to myself, like, wow, I wish I could, I wish I could go back to those days and just relive them a little bit. When I think of Eli being in Israel and joining the IDF, I think that there is a direct line, a direct connection from his experiences at CTA that led him to where he is today. He knew pretty quick into his gap year that he was that he wanted to join the IDF. And for me, it seems like two things. One, at CTA, he learned a great deal of responsibility towards the Jewish people, towards the Jewish faith. And the second thing is that he learned fun and love here and he took those two pieces with him to Israel. He wanted to be part of that, and he wanted to do his part. This gave him a real sense of his Jewish identity, um, and when he went to Israel in his gap year, it was really, you know, he, he was able to quickly have a sense of belonging. When the attack happened, I think immediately, um, Esther and I were, were wondering, has, he, has, has, his, has his mind changed? Um, but when we, when we were finally able to connect with him, um, there was complete resolve. He, he, he was absolutely 100% where he wanted to be. And I really think the experience at CTA and what took him to that. And I'm also very proud of him, of course. <laughs> There's so much pride, even being here and being able to say that I have a son there fighting um, is amazing. Now we are almost ready to break for dinner, but first I want to remind everyone that the, that the action, the auction, the auction committee led by Ariella Nudis and Emily Kendall have put together a list of great items for you to bid on. Using 21st century technology, you can bid on these items using your phone or computer. The QR code can be seen on the screen. The auction will stay open during dinner and after dessert, so you have plenty of time to win, to bid and win great prizes. Also on the screen during dinner will be a list of our dinner sponsors. Thank you to each and every one of you for the support. Please enjoy your dinner.
So Sim has first, right? Oh. <laughs> okay, Simha. At this time, we're going to restart the program. We all we hope you're all enjoying dinner. It has been a tradition at the scholarship dinner to introduce the young men and women from our 8th and 12th grade classes. Will all the students in 8th and 12th grade please stand and be recognized? The Torah Academy faculty and staff with support from our parents are a big reason why our students have achieved wonderful outcomes both inside and outside the classroom. Would all the CTA teachers and staff stand so we can express our sincere appreciation to you. Statistics tell us that on average, one of three students today experience poor mental health. Mental health issues can impact young people's ability to meet the many demands of school, their ability to make friends, and their overall behavior. The challenges facing Israel and the Jewish community can also affect the mental health of our students and families. Here with us tonight is Dr. Luan Fan, to discuss how to better understand the mental health crisis in our society and ways we can deal with it. Dr. Luan Fan is professor and chair of the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Health of College of Medicine at The Ohio State University. He also has the distinction of being the Jeffrey Schottenstein Endowed Chair of Psychi Psychiatry in, and Resilience. As a practicing psychiatrist, Dr. Fon cares for patients with depression, anxiety, stress, and addiction. As a physician scientist, he uses both brain imaging and clinical trials to further our in understanding of the biology and disease and the mechanisms of how treatments work. Dr. Fon has a long standing focus on prevention rooted in the cultivation of resilience, the practice of how we can train ourselves to, to bounce back from adversary, adversary. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Luan Fan. Um, good evening. Uh, thanks for having me. If you're part of the generation that no Sesame Street, and you can look around and say, which one is not like the other? <laughs> That's me. I am the answer to that question. Um, I'm honored to be here. Um, and I was asked to talk about resilience uh, amongst our students. Um, and and let, let, I was going to start with something else. But if you want to know why you live, why you work, why you fight, all you needed to do is look at those kids that sang to us in the beginning of the evening. That's all you need to do. Those kids are future, everything, right? Um, but it's hard to talk about resilience in the midst of turmoil. As someone who is not part of the Jewish community, we have to acknowledge that resilience only comes through adversity. On October 7th, the state of Israel was attacked. It was horrific terrorism that happened. People were held hostage and continue to be held hostages. We need to acknowledge the suffering and the worry of those families. And even now, today, we acknowledge and we need to acknowledge the rising sense 
of hatred of Jews, which is something that I think people forget, but it's something that has always been an undercurrent, and I want to know and I want to appreciate from someone who's not part of the Jewish community how important that is to recognize. So I'm a psychiatrist, and the Jewish community has always appreciated psychiatrists as a tradition. <laughs> My family does not, but that's another story. That said, even if I say something that sort of says, I understand about where you're coming from, you have to understand where I'm coming from. I was born in 1973. You should know what 1973 means for the Jewish community. I was born in war. My country, the South Vietnamese country, was being robbed of its presence, of its right to be in that country by the communists. I was born in a war where I saw people die, children. I saw people taking taken hostage. My father was taken a hostage and in prison for four years of my childhood. We left as refugees. Essentially, we were displaced from our homeland. We had to find another homeland somewhere else. And the fact that these kids sang about the national anthem of the United States and of Israel simultaneously is what I always hoped for my own people who were also displaced from South Vietnam. And that's why I think we resurrect, we, we, we connect with one another. When I speak about resilience, I always say that you can't be resilient unless you've gone through adversity. You can't build muscles without resistance training. You have to fight against something. And to me, understanding the Jewish community and the Jewish people this is a worth the fight. Let me know, let me tell you what I mean. Obviously, I can tell you four simple steps for resilience. Make sure you sleep seven to eight hours every night regularly. Make sure you eat a balanced diet. Make sure part of that balanced diet has some fish in it with high omega-3s. Make sure you move around all day. Make sure you take your phone which is the enemy of our world right now, and put it away from your bed, from your dinner table, so that you connect. And make sure you find a hobby. If you do all those things consistently every day, you've explained the vast majority of what it means to be resilient as an individual. But resilience is not just an individual sport. Resilience is a team sport. Let me say that again. Resilience is a team sport. And why does that matter to your community? I'm gonna bring back two stories from rats and rodents, and I'm not trying to equate humans with rodents. But we do share 95% plus of the genes. So we can learn something from the rats and the mice that frolic around and we probably want to exterminate any given day in our own households. Two great stories that have taught me something phenomenal, phenomenally about resilience. The first story comes from the fact that rats tend to die when you put them in a watering tank. After two minutes, they go to the bottom and they just die. But if you give the rat the chance to escape, in other words, if the experimenter takes that rat out after two minutes and gives them a chance to recovery, that rat, when exposed to the same tank again, lives for days. That's the power of hope. That's the power of that there is tomorrow that there is a reason to keep on fighting. It's an amazing story about resilience. The second great story from the rats 
If you experience threat and fear next to a fellow rat, you experience it less than you were if you were left alone. If that fellow rat experienced fear and overcame it and hung out with you in the same cage, you end up fighting that fear even stronger for days and months and years of your life. That's the power of social buffering. That's the power of social connectedness. So I'll leave you with simply the following thing beyond the layer of sleep and movement and hobbies and dropping your phones from your daily life. Connect. How do you connect to each other? Talk. Tell stories. Your history means everything. When we think about this school, we rely on our teachers to teach our kids the stories. Bring it to your home. Bring it to your dinner table. Tell the stories that you have. Tell the stories that your parents have. Tell the stories that your grandparents and your great parents' grandparents have. That's how I live. That's how I remain resilient, or at least that's my responsibility in my life, to tell the stories that my parents and my grandparents from South Vietnam passed on to me. That kind of storytelling will be able to give you the active ingredient to pass on to your children and students left and right. And that's why context means everything. This last week, the word context was freaking barraged to ridiculousness. <laughs> My two other colleagues, Steve Marin, Israel Lieberzahn, and I wrote in amongst the best paper journal in our field, Nature Reviews and Neuroscience, about context. Context is what imbues meaning to cues. You know what the cue is. It's a threat to you. It's a threat to your history, and it's a threat to your life going forward. That's the context that you need to impart on your children for them to build resilience going forward. And you have to say that with all the turmoil and all the sadness and all the anxiety and all the worry and all the fear and all the stuff that comes with telling that story. By telling that story of you, of where you came from, of your faith, of your religion, of your culture, of whatever it means to belong to community, to cabal, that's gonna make your children stronger than ever going forward. And that's how I wanna end. Just don't forget about your context, your history going forward. And I'm sure Michael Brody's always said that I've gone over my eight minutes, but uh, I, I really believe that, again, that, that resilience is more than an individual, and, and it is a team. And when you think about team, and when you think about us as people, it's about our history. And yours is amongst the richest history in the world. Don't let your students your children forget that because if they do then i think sadly we're all lost in some way right thank you very much Thank you, Dr. Fawn. One of our fantastic staff, Matt Bailey, athletic director, is celebrating his 20th year of teaching at our school.
To start the recognition of Matt, it is my pleasure to call upon Steve Guinan to say a few words. I'll begin with a simple question. Who has done more for Columbus Tour Academy than our next honoree? To begin, we would try to imagine what the world would be like if Matt Bailey had not walked through the doors of CTA back in 2003. It's like that movie, It's a Wonderful Life, in which an angel shows Jimmy Stewart what the world would be like without him. It's a pretty dark place. First of all, you would have to imagine CTA without those he inspired. For he is not a lower school teacher. He is not a middle school teacher. He is not an upper school teacher. He is everyone's teacher. Every grade, every day, every year, in the last 20 years, there is no student who can forget Mr. B. Secondly, without Bailey, there is no student athlete achievement. Without his athletic directorship, there is no preparation and production of our athletics that give meaning to the junior high and high school experiences. I shudder to ask you to imagine the desolation of a world in which there is no softball and no baseball. Those were entirely him. And I assure you, without Bailey, there is no CBI, which this year, its 14th, is welcoming the biggest field of teams, 16 from across the country, in what is the premier nationwide yeshiva baseball tournament. Yet perhaps his greatest impact happens here, in Mr. Bailey's classroom, the gymnasium, in which you now sit, and which he has generously loaned to us for the occasion. <laughs> His curriculum covers the most important lessons. It's called physical education, but in Mr. B's hands, you could call it character 101. These are the core lessons he teaches as he lives them. Hard work, accountability, fairness, respect, teamwork, honesty, and maybe the most important lesson of all, when you get knocked down, get back up. And finally, his methods may shine brightest. The enthusiasm, the joy, we all hear in Mr. B's voice, his booming, encouraging voice, along with his students' exuberance echoing throughout the halls amid games of Gaga, double knockout, Pac-Man tag, mat ball, and so many others, as though in Bailey's voice, it is always opening day. Altogether, Matt Bailey has taught the most students the most important lessons in the most memorable ways. I would add that Mr. B's incalculable impact is rooted in his love of family, Indeed, CTA is indebted to the entire Bailey family. Kirsten. As well as his parents, Randy and Debbie, who've helped our program in countless ways behind the scenes. We're grateful to his daughters, Kiernan, Madison, Kira, and his son, Matt Jr., for helping our run our programs from games to tournaments to Lagba Omer, including setup and clean up on so many nights in this gym and on the diamond. And so it is simply impossible to imagine a world without him as they did in that movie. The movie whose protagonist name, no less, is Bailey. But we can take a moment to celebrate 
a wonderful 20 years. It is my honor to invite to the stage the angel who came to us a generation ago to show us all that was possible. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Bailey. Now you get down. I'll please say just a second. Matt's legacy lives on where he played at Gehanna Lincoln and Capitol. This fall, Matt was inducted into Gehanna Lincoln's Hall of Fame, and last year he won college, or his conference coach of the year. I know his number is 24 at heart, but tonight we are retiring your jersey coach with a different number. Finally, I'm honored to announce the CTA Lion Nation Athletics Wall, inspired by tonight's recognition of Matt Bailey's 20th year. You no doubt noticed the wall entering, the, uh, entering Mr. B's classroom. The wall will allow us to celebrate the work of students who have walked onto the court, took to the field, or just cheered as in the bleachers as a lion. Our own wall of flame, flame plaques will pay tribute to the achievements of our student athletes their families, and will create a legacy for those important lessons, experiences, and achievements that can only be found in our athletic program. All proceeds will benefit the scholarship fund for special projects and our athletic program. Mazaltov, Mr. B, and thank you. Pretty incredible. Jake, appreciate it. I want to thank Columbus Tour Academy for honoring me tonight. And then this is my 21st year, 20, 21 years of teaching. I you know, walked with my wife in here and saw, you know, students I had, now parents. And it's just it's just incredible. You know, and I look back, you know, it's, and it's just not honoring me. And like G said, so great that it's the entire family um, that's been dedicated here to Columbus Tour Academy. You know, not only have, you know, I've made an impact, but you guys have made an impact on our family and have raised our children. We're now one in college, one in senior, one in ninth grade, another one in sixth. Columbus Tour Academy has raised them too. Many nights here, and I was, I was thinking back. There's 57. We've been to 57 out-of-state trips, you know, 57 out-of-state trips where we've gone to basketball or baseball or, you know, um, I think do we go one time volleyball? I can't remember. It's 57, but. <laughs> From the time we leave, I'm worried because these are my children, okay? I treat them as I do my children. And I worry because I, every time we go out to get them back the same way they left, but hopefully with some great memories. <laughs> I'm supposed to keep this short, so let me get going here. I'm grateful. For everyone who has been part of this journey, from my family to my friends, my principals, the teachers, my parents, and obviously my lovely students. A special thanks to Steve Guinan, who's not only a great friend, but a mentor, teacher, and, I, I, and one I trust with expert advice when problems arrive. 
I can't believe it's been 20 years it's flown by. You know, and I, like I, I told you before, these are my children, and, and hopefully they come home with some ESPN highlights and, you know, and, and, and some great stories from Jim and how crazy, you know, Mr. Bailey is, because I really truly feel that the enthusiasm I have is definitely passed down to them, and when they see it, I, I make it a real deal, really important for them in class. And, and I've said this to some of the parents out here, but it's a real true testament of, of, of the community, of you guys raising your children, you know, and, and how helpful and, and, and how cordial and how enthusiastic they are about coming to school. It's a true testament to you guys, our teachers, our parents, our administrators, and the whole Jewish community here in Columbus. Again, thank you. For everybody who honored me, is honoring me tonight, and go Lions. In keeping with our gala theme, the impact each of us can make, it is my pleasure to ask you to look at the screen to view a video created by our award-winning film class under the astute leadership of teacher and author Steve Guinan. When you think back on your life, you're not worrying about how much money you had, how much power you had, how much prestige you had. That was all a game. That was an illusion. The only thing that is going to matter is the impact you had on other people's lives. We're all on a separate journey. But the amazing thing about our lives is that at the end, they're not gonna talk about the stuff that you acquired. They're gonna talk about who you were, how you lived, and how you encouraged. Even the smallest gestures can have the most profound impact. Success is incredibly important, but even more important than success is making an impact. It's knowing that you have made a difference. It's knowing that because you have been here, you have helped others, you have developed people, and you have made the world a better place. The effect you have on others is the most valuable currency there is. Your achievement in anything means nothing unless it goes to the greater good. We all have our purpose, the way we can make our mark on the world. And it isn't what we gain, but what we give. Thank you, Mr. Guinan and your talented film class. It is now my pleasure to ask Ruth Pack Adler to come to the podium to begin the recognition of our final community service honoree, Gary Covell. Hi. You ready, Gary? No. <laughs> I stand here tonight with a very easy job to do, to introduce tonight's Distinguished Service Award honoree, Gary Covell. 
For many years, Buddy and I, along with Andrew and Hannah, have had a place at our table for Gary. Gary was, in fact, the only person we allowed in our bubble during the most isolating times of the pandemic. He didn't even mind when we made him sit alone at the Thanksgiving table with his coat on because the windows were open, or seated him at the farthest end of our sukkah alone at his own table. Gary's always a welcome guest for us because he and Lana, of blessed memory, welcomed us into our, their home so many times over the years. They were among the very first people we met when we arrived here in Columbus, and they went out of their way to make sure we always felt welcome and included. Having Gary join us for Shabbat and holidays guarantees that there will always be good conversation, he always compliments the food, and he eats everything on his plate, albeit very, very slowly. <laughs> and as he would say, he doesn't take up much space at the table. Gary also has some special talents. He's an excellent dancer, he loves great music, and he has pinpoint aim with a super soaker. But it's Gary's special way of understanding people, of remembering things, and of keeping you in his circle that lets you know that he sees you. Gary is a selfless person who cares deeply about others, and especially about our Jewish community. Since childhood, he's been connected and involved in this community. As a youth in BBYO, B'nai B'rith Maccabee Lodge, the Columbus Hebrew School, which got some bad rap earlier, um, Agud Asachim, and then into his teen years as a youth advisor for BBYO. And then he got involved in JNF, Jewish Federation Super Sundays, the Vad, the Hever Kadisha, the Kolel, B'nai B'rith Bowling, the list goes on and on. Together with Lana, he continued and deepened his involvement in the community. They were members of Agudas Achim and Ahav Shalom and had the pleasure of watching Lana's son, David Kesey, graduate from CTA's second high school graduating class, where they were also dedicated volunteers. They fundraised, they cooked, they did lots of things. If you knew Gary and Lana together, you knew all you needed to do was call on them. We're happy and we know that Gary's thrilled to have his family here tonight. And we welcome David and his fiance Sarit, along with Daniel Kesey and his son Bryson, who joined Gary tonight. <laughs> Professionally, Gary has worked in the insurance industry as a financial advisor and confidant to many, helping people make thoughtful plans for their future. His wisdom and humility and compassionate demeanor creates the safe space needed to make delicate decisions. In recent years, Gary turned his attention to Columbus Tour Academy, where he has participated in the spring fundraiser as a matcher. Gary understands that we as a community must make the education of our Jewish children a priority. Gary even visits the school from time to time to check on his investment and to share pointers with Rabbi Drandoff. Columbus Tour Academy is extremely fortunate to have a partner like Gary who so deeply believes in its mission. It's my honor and privilege to ask Gary to please join me to receive the Distinguished Service Award. The inscription. reads the Distinguished Service Award presented to Gary Covell for his unselfish and generous support of CTA to educate and ensure a strong future for our community's children. CTA Scholarship Dim Dinner, December 10th, 2023, Kislev 5784. This is overwhelming. Thank you, Ruth, for your kind words, generous words, distinguished rabbis, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. 
Many of you know me based on our interactions at different stages of our lives. Others don't know me at all. But one thing I hope you will all take with you after this evening is my passion for Columbus Tour Academy and its students. <laughs> it is therefore incumbent upon me to thank my beloved parents, Harold and Betty Covell of blessed memory, who by their actions, consciously or subconsciously, instilled in me the importance of obtaining a traditional Jewish education and planting the roots for my continued growth in Judaism and connection to the Jewish community. This passion for Judaism was enhanced by my late wife, Lana Berens Bernstein, Zikwana Lebracha, who also shared it. And we, when we married, chose to send her son, David, who lived with us to Torah Academy as he entered ninth grade and became a part of the second high school graduating class in 1996. Lanham was my soulmate, who added extra meaning to my life, and I remember her with a great and everlasting love. Yesterday was her birthday, and Friday I sponsored a day of learning at CTA in her memory. Also at this time, I thank my family and friends who are here tonight to share this occasion with me, and others who are not here but who contributed to the ad book in my honor. Of course, I would not be standing here tonight if not for the honorary committee choosing me to join other worthy honorees to receive such a prestigious award. In particular, I want to thank Rabbi Drandoff and Shari Herzagi for this honor and platform. And finally, but most importantly, I thank Hashem for allowing me to reach this point in my life. And now, Mr. Timekeeper, you can start the clock for my main speech and important message. I believe in Columbus Torah Academy and its mission. I believe in its headmaster, Rabbi Drandoff, and his teachers and staff. I believe in the lunch staff, maintenance crew, its technology, athletics, and current security teams. I believe in its board members. I believe in all of CTA and its students. And I think you do too, based on this year's ad book. Pretty thick. Thank you all. The Jewish nation was placed on this earth to be partners with God in becoming a light unto the nations and using the tool he created for us to make the world better. That tool is, of course, the Torah, through which we learn how to act and how not to act. Anti-Semitism is on the rise. We see what our kids are facing on college campuses. Many students and adults cower to pro-Palestinian protesters and other anti-Semites, at least partly due to lack of knowledge, lack of pride in their Jewish heritage. But students who go through traditional Jewish day schools like CTA know how to respond. CTA students have a strong Jewish identity and understanding of their Jewish history and heritage. They are proud to be Jewish and are prepared to face adversity with knowledge for all who will listen. They will not be intimidated. This is where you and I come in, the believers and supporters of CTA. We have the ad book and spring fundraiser as proof. But to sustain that growth and also ensure long-term growth and stability of CTA, we need a lucrative endowment. This can be accomplished in two ways. Those who have been blessed can contribute a large sum of money to the endowment fund now, or can create a legacy gift 
and know that CTA will be able to use endowment interest in its operating budget. I would like to be a part of a modest goal to secure $3 million to the endowment by January 31, 2024 in either living gifts now or legacy gifts for the future. In just the past few weeks, I've had some positive conversations, and we already have a significant head start toward reaching that milestone. This is a goal we can reach, but only you can enable us to re reach it in total. It is our responsibility to see that there are enough funds to enable children to be educated at CTA for generations to come. In fact, I have made and formalized my legacy gift towards that goal, and I want you to join me. I have my pad and my pen. I can take your names this evening. I can take your names and phone numbers tonight, or you can call the CT office, CTA office to speak with Rabbi Randolph or Shari. If you call tomorrow or Tuesday, I've asked them to drop whatever they are doing to speak to you. So I hope you will keep them busy, because I'm sure the teachers would rather not go to meetings. You know, you know. <laughs> Kazakh, be strong in your commitment. Kazakh, be invigorated in your generosity. Benis Hazek, and together, we will be strengthened to create an everlasting, vibrant, traditional Jewish community in Columbus, Ohio, with a strong, well-established CTA for our community's children to attend. Let Columbus Tour Academy Lions roar with pride. CTA, hi! I'm Miss Royal, hi! Thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> Happy Hanukkah. Thank you for spending the fourth night of Hanukkah with us here, celebrating the education of the Jewish future. Please give it up one more time for our amazing honorees. <laughs> Matt Bailey is the epitome of dedication. I, I arrive to school almost every morning around 7, 7, 10 a.m. And Matt is already here preparing the gym for, stud for a student who likes to practice his jump shot every morning. But Matt also closes the building up close to 10 p.m. during the basketball season. That's dedication. Mr. and Mr. Gareth, every time I speak with them, always fun, always a smile. They always remind me how much they love to our academy. And I just want to say, I have to make Baruch Hashem, we get to make a lot of phone calls in preparation for our spring fundraiser. My phone call with Mr. Greff lasts approximately 60 seconds. <laughs> He's not one for small talk, <laughs> so he just wants me to ask. says, sure, I love the place, quick. <laughs> and then, of course, Gary. I want to share a story with that. Um, it was, I think it was two years ago, Gary called me, again, the spring fundraiser, and he apologized, and he said, I'm sorry, Rabbi, but I, I have to cut back my gift this year. He waited for my, my heart to sink. Then he said, unfortunately, last year I was able to double my gift. This year I can only raise it 10%. I'll never forget Monday morning, October 9th, when I had to drive to school, and I was worried. I wasn't sure what I was going to face, the temperament of the students, the faculty, and the staff. I myself was confused with how I felt. And I'll never forget that morning davening, that chakras, the power of davening the upper school. 
I felt the fire in the room, the determination, the beautiful way our students davened. I had the opportunity to say to him with almost every student in the school, and again, there was this fire, this resolve to do anything for the Jewish people in Israel. The students talked about advocacy, participating in chesed projects. They were determined to do whatever they can. And I'm happy to say two months later, they did it, and they're still doing it. Uh, we, three weeks ago, we took three buses to, for a rally to Washington, D.C. Between the students and families and members of our, our school community and those who met us, there we had about 150 people in D.C. as part of the 300,000 Jews advocating on behalf of our brothers and sisters in Israel. What was amazing, though, wasn't just those who came from Columbus. I bumped into many, many alumni or CTA, former CTA students and parents who were also there who understood, based on their education and their connection to CTA, what it means to share that responsibility on behalf of the Jewish people. CTA is making its mark. We have students who are learning Torah at the highest level. We have, stu we have an alum who literally took off from work as a physician and went to Israel to volunteer his time to do whatever he can. As we mentioned this evening, we have students who are in the IDF putting everything on the line for our brothers and sisters. What I've learned over the last couple of months is the world might be crazy, there might be a lot of confusion, but there is moral clarity in the CTA world. In the, world, in the walls of CTA, our students are driven, they're motivated, they want to connect to Hashem, they're developing the skills to take on the world. In the side of these walls, there's moral clarity, there's resolve, and really there's joy. I'd like to take a minute to share with you a story that the sofa who's working on our Torah, who God willing be dedicated in, in probably in the next month, he shared with me a very powerful story I'd like to share with you. My husband, an IDF Robin Hood soldier, went into Gaza with a tiny Torah scroll. This Torah scroll is an exact replica of a Torah scroll that was smuggled into and survived the extermination camps in Bergen-Belsen. Bar Mitzvah boys read from it risking their own lives to keep the Jewish tradition. One of the children, Yehoiakim Yosef, survived the Holocaust and immigrated to Israel with the Torah scroll. Years later, became a professor, Yehoiakim Yosef, at the Technion and taught Elon Ramon, the first Israeli astronaut. When Elon Ramon ascended into space, he was given the Torah scroll by the professor. From space, he told the story of the tiny Torah scroll and the miraculous survival of the Jewish people, Am Yisrael Chai. The tragic end of the space shuttle is known. The shuttle crashed and Elan Ramon and the other astronauts did not survive. The Torah scroll did not survive either. My father-in-law, Neil Rubinstein, heard about this story a few years ago and was very moved. He established a project to rewrite the tiny Torah scroll. This tiny scroll, an exact replica of the one that survived the camps and so powerfully symbolized the eternity of the Jewish people, entered Gaza. My husband, R.A. Rubinstein, had the privilege to take it in. Soldiers read from the Torah, danced with it, and declared once again and always, Am Yisrael Chai. The Torah scroll may not be the exact one, may not be the exact cloth, ink, but we all know the words are the same. The message is the same. The Torah is the same. The Torah is forever. And that is ultimately what powers the Jewish people forever. We're celebrating Hanukkah. The lights of the menorah represent the Torah Shabal Peh, the oral law. The oral law, oral law at its core represents the concept of the handing over tradition to our children. And that's what CTA is all about. It's giving over the Torah, the traditions, the values to our students, which enables our students currently and past ones to make their mark, to make a difference and advocate on behalf of the Jewish people all over the world internationally. As Gary mentioned, CTA is making its mark now, and we're launching our campaign to build up our endowment. I want you to know I was thinking one to two million dollars in the next few months, Gary said, absolutely not. It has to be three months by January 31st. And to his credit, he's already made a significant dent. 
But I ask everyone this evening, as we plan for the future of Torah Academy, to make sure we have so many amazing teachers, faculty and staff here, who we'll all have tremendous stories and dedication and love for your children, for our children. And our goal is to make our mark, to build up that endowment, to make sure for many, many generations to come, CTA can continue to make its mark. Good night. Her Herb and Francine, Matt and Gary, once again, thanks to all of you for your commitment and dedication to CTA. And thank you for allowing us to honor you this evening. Before we conclude our program, we would like to thank our sponsors, volunteers, Torah Academy staff, including a special thank you to Shari Herzagi, who organizes so many aspects to our scholarship debtor. And that's including the impress impressive tribute journal. There are benchers on the table. A dessert reception will now be served in the lower school gym. The silent auction will remain open during the dessert reception, so don't forget to get your bid in. Shalom, happy Hanukkah, and enjoy the rest of the evening. <laughs>